I'm Terry Phillips, After the News. If you're like me, you probably feel compassion for the casualties of natural disasters, no matter where in the world they happen. Those of us who live in California can especially empathize with earthquake victims. Such was the case after the news from Nepal. A 7.8 magnitude quake killed at least 7,000 people and injured twice that number, not to mention all the homes and other infrastructure destroyed. It made me feel very sad, and frankly, a little frustrated, because I wasn't quite sure what to do. I mean, bad things happen all the time, right? Most of them go unnoticed by most of us. We can't possibly know and care equally about everything in every faraway, unfamiliar place. Except for the size of this particular disaster, and the notoriety of Mount Everest, Nepal might just as well be on the moon. That doesn't mean we should ignore such calamities. If we can afford to offer aid, why not do so? If not, we can at least be good citizens of the world. There is inherent value in knowing about and empathizing with what others are going through. Of course, it's only natural to be more aware and to care more about suffering closer to home. But even being nearby doesn't always let us stop bad things from happening. I've been thinking about how to deal with all the risks that can't be prevented. Let me give you a few examples. In case you hadn't heard, an active volcano is erupting right now under the Pacific Ocean about 300 miles off the coast of Oregon. Scientists say it's not causing any harm and is not likely to do so. I put this in the category of being interesting, but no need to worry. There's also an active volcano in Yellowstone National Park. When it blows, two-thirds of the United States will be covered by ash and become uninhabitable. But that's probably 100,000 years away. Again, a fascinating fact, nothing we can do about it, no need to worry. Our sun will explode in about three billion years, destroying all life on this planet. A curious tidbit of knowledge, impossible to stop, don't worry about it. On the other hand, a catastrophic quake will probably hit the West Coast in the near future. The Midwest is going to have more powerful tornadoes. Huge hurricanes will clobber the eastern seaboard and the Gulf Coast. Now, we can't prevent these things from happening either, but we can prepare ourselves to survive them, personally, for our families, for our communities. I'm not saying we should worry, but we should be prepared to act. There's one more danger we can't prevent. Whether we caused it or not, and I know many people think we did not cause it, there is no doubt that the Earth's climate is changing. We already see the evidence. Polar ice caps disappearing, sea levels rising, drastic changes in plants and animals. It's all happening in front of our eyes, and it all points to an increased emission of greenhouse gases. Long before Yellowstone erupts, long before our sun explodes, and long before California breaks off the continent, we are heading for an era of extinction. Over the coming decades, without some serious intervention by us, billions of creatures will be wiped out, and the time to ameliorate this effect is passing quickly. Frankly, it doesn't matter whether you think human beings caused global warming. We are certainly exacerbating the problem. I say it's time for us, all of us, to stop being so selfish and save our ecosystem. If not for ourselves, then for the sake of those who follow us. I'm Terry Phillips. Thanks for listening, and please tell your friends.